My name is Andrew Okwara and I'm currently the Managing Director for East Africa for Bridge International Academies. It can be best described as a sink or swim. I arrived in the middle of the active operations of Bridge uh, International Academy, so in, in the middle of term time. And Bridge, by its, um, its structure, you could say we are a very diversified company. We've got a real estate arm that actually constructs our buildings. We have got a customer experience department that does the marketing and se selling, that runs all the teachers, over 6,000 teachers. We have got a market intelligence arm called Customer Insight. So we do market intelligence, understand our customers, their needs, and what they want, what they don't like. At the same time, we've also got an operations department that ships all our books, our midterm ex examinations, um, and all the various operational activities uh, that concern the academies. Um, in addition to that, we also have a customer call center because we treat each of our pupils, parents, as our customers. So we're all customer focused and obviously our pupil operations. We actually recruit some of the best um, youth and uh, employees that we have in the Kenyan market due to a rigorous recruitment process that we have in place. It's kind of setting your dreams, ambitions to the highest level possible. This I did, uh, I can remember from the time growing up, even as early as seven, I knew what I wanted to be. I looked at uh, my parents, my uncles, um, what they were doing, bits, of, bits and pieces I liked about it. And one of the things that was always imparted by my parents is the only way to make a difference to your life to, or to change it is through hard work um, and education, obviously. So um, working towards that was always a name. Um, I wanted to be an engineer. I started to be a civil and structural engineer. So I'm an engineer by training. Um, after that, I attained the qualification. I wanted to work in, in aerospace engineering. I had the opportunity to in, include working in aerospace engineering. Um, I also had the opportunity to work in IT and telecoms. And, um, and later on, um, realizing that I needed the financial skill set. I ended up working as a retail banker, investment banker, and also doing a bit of logistics and um, yes, and consultancy. So all those uh, uh, various skills and skill set, um, you could say various industries, working with various people, various challenges, um, I always end up or find myself doing such roles. And it's that challenge that kind of motivates me to get out of bed every day. One of my key selling points, if you ask me, I'm always results focused, looking at delivering um, up, way and above what is expected. That is a constant aim, constant ambition. Um, it keeps me awake at night when I do not see that happening, when I do not see the people I'm leading or working with um, set up in such a way favorably to deliver what we set up to, to do. And also the thought that um, my two shoulders. On one shoulder, I've got over 60,000 students who are depending on every decision I make. On the other shoulder, I've got another 7,000 and more staff who also rely on every decision I make. Um, and the future of these children, and consequently the future of Kenya, relies on the education that is imparted to all our children in each and every educational system, whether public sector uh, education, whether uh, private sector education. So that responsibility, you ask me what keeps me up awake at night, that also keeps me awake up at night. I'm up every day between four to five. Uh, check my emails uh, first thing uh, uh, when I wake up uh, between 5 and 6. As soon as it's daylight, I go for either a 10-kilometer run in the morning or go for a swim 
or a cycle, right? Uh, because I, I actively participate in ports, so that clears my mind. I come back, I check emails, write a few emails because I've been inspired <laughs> by my physical activity in the morning. And uh, after that, uh, drive to work, um, get in, uh, catch up on the, the dailies, uh, that uh, takes me five to ten minutes. Um, and then uh, I, I, I go into the various meetings I have. Uh, meetings throughout the day. I try to stagger them, but I normally have a full calendar and I get to meet at least with all of my directors each and every day. Um, and then uh, when I have free time to catch up on all the decisions made or get things together um, about six o'clock, uh, work till about eight o'clock um, to avoid the traffic <laughs> and uh, eventually proceed back home. Um, in time to be with family and uh, and then after that uh, check a few emails might sleep at about 10 11 o'clock and the new day begins the next day uh, if i go back to my engineering uh, one of the things that i learned pretty soon when working was newton's is a third law of motion action and reaction are equal and opposite so that means for me i have to lead by example my actions, what I do, how I'm perceived, is going to reflect on the organization. So, I'd like uh, the directors to follow how I lead my actions, always results focused, always working hard, always delivering. And by example, I expect them to lead by that same example. And we hire professionals. I have hired professionals to be able to do, to do those roles. So, I believe if I'm treating my directors in a certain way, making demands of them in a certain way, that is also passed down to their, their employees. Um, I also endeavor to get to know each and every one of the employees. It is hard remembering names, getting to know personalities, but I always try to do my best, always try to uh, integrate with the staff, um, sit with the staff. Um, for example, at the moment, um, I don't have an office. So I go around, I sit at every desk, sit with employees, speak to employees, make new friends every day. And in so doing, just try to get to know the challenges um, of all the employees in the organization. Um, for field-based employees, every Thursday, that's the only day that differs from, from a normal working day, I go out to the field, travel around the country, meet all the teachers that we have, get to understand what they do, how they're doing it, the challenges they face. Because as I tell them, how can I make decisions um, about them if I don't understand what their needs might be? So um, my leadership style is inclusive. I, I like getting to know people, speak to people, and get to understand what makes people tick. The staff we have inspire me because the passion they have, believing in what they're doing, is, is testament. When you meet any bridge employee, you can see the belief is there in what they're doing. And for me, that is the motivation. It's up to me to maintain and ensure that that passion is kept. So I have to support them, support all their needs to be able to perform and achieve maximum performance because in turn, all that effort is delivered down to the, our customers, the pupils and the parents who I teach. I use this expression. My friends have asked me at first, what do I, what do, I do now? They, don't re they didn't really understand until now I sat on them about bridge. But what I used to tell them was, I'm in the service of potential. What does that mean to me? It's like, what I'm doing I think is is one of the most fulfilling roles that I've done, if not the most fulfilling to date. Because I am out, what, what I'm doing and what the result and delivery of everything I do is enabling each and every child that passes through our system to exploit their potential. I believe each and every child has the right and, and, to, and to have that opportunity to exploit what skills that they have or skills that they might not have but might gather through education. So that's what gets me out of bed every morning.
We have been a disruptive innovation uh, to the education sector. Um, we, have, we started by building at scale and also on a digital, an I, digital platform. So as a startup, which is what we used to be, um, you are firefighting, always reactive. Um, it is one of the causes because you're learning hot on your feet, you're implementing as fast as possible. But there comes a time when you have to stabilize, make sure that all your governance, processes, everything's in line so that you can build or rise to the next stage. You can capacity build, you can ensure that you, whatever you do, is sustainable. Your strategies that you write, your wishes, satisfy your consumers and customers. So, my role, uh, I see, is actually setting, stabilizing and setting that platform to enable us for the next chapter of uh, the Bridge International Academy story. I actually um, like old classic cars. So, um, if I had a choice, I'd get an old classic car. Only, if anything, I'd drive an old car. Um, it's a very old car, uh, just uh, uh, that depending on what's rattling, I know what to do about it. But one of the things that I find is striking, this same car kind of reminds me about uh, my role at Bridge International Academies, because it's not what's on the outside that matters, it's what's on the inside. That car has got an engine that goes like the wind. On the other hand, inside Bridge International Academies, we teach using tablets, smartphones, the latest technologies applied, the latest matrix and scales are used inside uh, with the students to track people's progress, to administer the state-of-the-art learning. So it's not what's on the outside, but the inside and the results that are achieved afterwards. Nothing comes easy. You have to work hard for every single thing. There's no easy way to success. Everything you put in the hours, you get results at the end. They might not come today, but they will come one day. Second thing I'd say is treat everyone the same way you'd like to be treated. That's something I've always held dear, something I always do and I still do. The third, principles. You must be principled. Principles in, uh, involve having integral values, having morals, because these shine through, show through in the work that you get, you do, and you deliver. I always wanted to be a professional motorcycle racer. I still do. <laughs> 